The long haul through New Mexico was punishing, the kind of drive that wore you down to the marrow. By the time I reached the rest area, I was desperate for a break. It was one of those middle-of-nowhere places, a concrete slab surrounded by miles of nothing but desert. The sky stretched out endlessly, pitch black except for a faint sprinkle of stars. I parked my rig in the far corner of the lot, cutting the engine. The silence that followed was deafening, broken only by the creak of my cab door as I stepped down. The night air was cool, carrying the faint tang of dry sand. The rest area was deserted, save for a single dark sedan parked on the opposite end of the lot. It sat there like a blot of ink on an otherwise blank canvas, its windows so tinted they looked more like mirrors reflecting the night. I didn't see anyone inside. I leaned against the side of my truck and lit a cigarette, keeping one eye on the sedan. I wasn't paranoid, not yet, but something about the way it just sat there unnerved me. Maybe it was the stillness, or the way the desert swallowed every sound except the faint scratch of my lighter. The first drag of smoke calmed my nerves, and I allowed myself to look away. Just for a moment. That's when I caught movement out of the corner of my eye. A figure was stepping out of the sedan. A tall, shadowy shape, its features hidden in the darkness. Then another figure followed. And another. My heart skipped. They didn't walk. They seemed to glide, their movements too smooth, too fast. My pulse quickened as more shapes emerged, spilling out of the car like ink bleeding across paper. Before I knew it, the shadows were everywhere, slipping between the parked rigs and creeping toward me. They didn't make a sound. Just the sight of them was enough to set every instinct in my body screaming. Hey, I called out, my voice shaky. What do you want? They didn't answer. They didn't stop. I dropped my cigarette, crushing it under my boot as I bolted for the cab. My hands fumbled with the door handle, and I practically threw myself inside, slamming the door shut behind me. My fingers shook as I hit the lock button, the sound of the doors clicking into place somehow louder than my own ragged breathing. Through the windshield, I saw them closing in. Dozens of them now. Dark shapes silhouetted against the faint glow of the rest area's flickering lights. Their movements were wrong, their limbs bending at unnatural angles as they swarmed toward my truck. The first thud came from the driver's side window, a clawed hand slapping against the glass. Then another, and another. Soon, they were everywhere, clawing at the doors and windows, their faces pressing against the glass. Their features were indistinct, blurred like smudged charcoal sketches, but their eyes, their eyes were pits of darkness that seemed to pull at me, drawing me into their void. I screamed, slamming my fist against the dashboard. Leave me alone. The cab filled with a sound like nails scraping against metal. They were trying to tear their way in. My heart raced as I fumbled for the keys, jamming them into the ignition. The engine roared to life and I slammed my foot on the gas. The truck lurched forward, headlights blazing as I tore out of the lot. My hands gripped the wheel so tightly they ached, but I didn't care. I just needed to get away. As I sped down the empty highway, I risked a glance in the rearview mirror. The lot was empty. Completely empty. No shadows. No sedan. Nothing. My stomach twisted. I could still hear the whispers, faint and sinister, like they were clinging to the inside of my head. The highway stretched on, the desert on either side swallowing the light from my high beams. I told myself I was safe now, that whatever I'd seen was behind me. But deep down, I wasn't convinced. And then I saw it. The sedan. It was ahead of me now, parked dead center on the highway, its taillights glowing like twin embers in the darkness. My heart sank. There was no time to stop. I yanked the wheel, the tires screeching as the rig veered onto the shoulder. Gravel sprayed, the truck shuddered, and I fought to keep it from tipping. When I finally came to a stop, I was shaking. I looked back at the road, expecting to see the sedan behind me again, but the highway was empty, as if it had never been there at all. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. Get it together, Linda, I muttered. You're just tired, seeing things. But even as I said it, I didn't believe it. The scratches on the side of my truck told a different story. In the faint glow of the interior light, I could see them through the side mirror. Jagged marks etched deep into the metal, like something with claws had tried to peel it open. I didn't stop again that night. I drove straight through to the next town, the fear clinging to me like a second skin. 
When I finally pulled into a well-lit truck stop, I climbed out to inspect the damage. The scratches were still there, deep and deliberate. But it wasn't just the scratches. Above them, scrawled in a language I couldn't recognize, was a single word. I don't know what it meant, and I'm not sure I want to. All I know is that I'll never stop at a remote rest area again. Whatever I saw that night is still out there, waiting, and I have the feeling it's not done with me yet. I'd been on the road for hours, chasing a deadline that was quickly slipping through my fingers. Dispatch had me running late on a delivery, and the highway was crawling with construction zones that seemed to sprout like weeds in the middle of nowhere. When I saw a dirt road branching off to the right, unmarked but wide enough for my rig, I made a snap decision. A shortcut. It had to lead somewhere. The road started off fine, bumpy but manageable. Dust kicked up behind my truck as I rumbled forward, trees closing in on either side like a tunnel. The GPS had stopped updating, the little blue dot frozen, but I told myself not to worry. Shortcuts weren't supposed to be official, right? After an hour, though, the road narrowed, the trees crowding closer. My high beams barely pierced the darkness, the towering pines swallowing the light. I hadn't seen another vehicle, a house, or even a broken fence post. Just miles of forest that stretched endlessly in every direction. Unease gnawed at me. I reached for my radio to check in with dispatch, but the static was all I got. No signal. My chest tightened as I realized just how alone I was. All right, that's enough of that, I muttered, forcing a laugh to break the tension. Time to turn back. But when I tried to turn the rig around, I realized the road had changed. The dirt path that had been behind me was gone. In its place stood a dense forest, thick with underbrush and trees so close together I couldn't have squeezed between them on foot. I slammed on the brakes, staring in disbelief. It wasn't possible. I'd just come this way. I reversed a few feet, the tires churning against the loose earth, but the forest didn't budge. It was as if it had grown up behind me in an instant, sealing off my escape. My heart hammered in my chest as I leaned forward, Gripping the wheel so tightly my knuckles turned white. The headlights flickered. No, 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 I muttered, flipping the switch on the dash. The lights came back, but their glow was weaker now, dimmer. Shadows danced just outside their reach, flickering and stretching unnaturally. I squinted, convinced I was imagining things, but the shadows were moving, growing, twisting like living things. My hands trembled as I reached for the ignition. If I could just keep driving forward, maybe I'd find another road, or anything that wasn't this suffocating, endless forest. The engine roared as I floored it, but the trees seemed to close in tighter, their branches reaching toward the cab like skeletal fingers. The shadows darted closer, slipping just beyond the edges of the light. That's when I saw the clearing. It appeared out of nowhere, the forest parting like a curtain to reveal a wide, empty space. I slowed to a stop in the middle of it, my breathing ragged as I tried to make sense of what was happening. The truck's engine sputtered, then stalled completely, plunging me into silence. Come on, I hissed, turning the key in the ignition. Nothing. The dashboard lights flickered, then went dark. I sat there in the cab, the silence pressing down on me like a weight. It wasn't just quiet, it was the absence of sound, the kind that makes your ears strain for something, anything. The air felt heavy, thick with the kind of dread that coils in your gut and refuses to let go. Then, the clawing began. It started at the back of the trailer. Long, deliberate scrapes against the metal siding. My heart leapt into my throat as I turned toward the sound, but I couldn't see anything in the mirrors. The scraping moved closer. A slow, grating sound that sent shivers up my spine. I locked the doors, my fingers fumbling with the button as the clawing reached the cab. A loud thud shook the truck as something heavy slammed against the door. My breath hitched, my pulse thundering in my ears. Shadows darted across the windshield, their movements quick and erratic. I grabbed the flashlight from the glove compartment, my hands trembling as I flicked it on. The beam barely cut through the darkness, but I caught glimpses, twisted shapes with two long limbs and glowing eyes that blinked out the moment the light touched them. The cab shuddered again, harder this time. The windshield began to fog up as if something was breathing against it. I pressed back against the seat, clutching the flashlight like a lifeline. 
Leave me alone, I shouted, my voice cracking. The whisper started then, faint but unmistakable. A hundred voices murmuring in unison, too low for me to make out the words but filled with malice. They circled the truck, closing in from all sides. The windows shook as clawed hands raked across the glass, leaving long, jagged marks. I don't know how long I sat there, paralyzed by fear. Minutes? Hours? The darkness outside seemed endless, and the whispers grew louder, more insistent. I must have passed out at some point, because the next thing I remember was waking up to sunlight streaming through the windshield. I was no longer in the clearing. My truck was parked in the middle of a crowded truck stop, rigs and trailers surrounding me on all sides. The forest, the shadows, the whispers, they were gone. For a moment, I thought it had all been a dream, but then I looked around the cab. My fuel gauge read empty, despite having filled up hours before. The dashboard was gouged with deep claw marks, the plastic torn apart as if by something impossibly strong. I stumbled out of the truck, my legs weak and unsteady. The other truckers looked at me strangely as I leaned against the side of my rig, trying to catch my breath. One of them, a burly man with a graying beard, approached me. You all right, pal? He asked, his voice tinged with concern. I didn't know how to answer. My mind was racing, trying to make sense of what had happened. Where am I? I finally managed to ask. He gave me a puzzled look. Outside Albuquerque, you've been here since before dawn. Yep. I stared at him, my heart sinking. Albuquerque was hundreds of miles from where I'd been last night. There was no way I could have driven that distance, not with an empty fuel tank. I didn't tell him what had happened. What would I even say? He wouldn't have believed me. Hell, I barely believed it myself. But as I climbed back into my cab, one thing became clear. I'd never take another shortcut again. Rest stops at night have a strange atmosphere, like they exist in a world just slightly out of sync with the rest of reality. The glow of the fluorescent lights, the hum of vending machines, the silence stretching out into the darkness, it all feels too fragile, too temporary. I'd stopped at one such place deep into my hall, somewhere along a stretch of interstate I could no longer name. My legs were stiff, my back sore, and my eyelids drooping with exhaustion. A quick pit stop, I figured, and I'd be good to go. The restroom was empty, save for the flicker of one dim bulb overhead and the faint smell of bleach, masking something more unpleasant. I splashed cold water on my face and looked up into the streaked mirror. My reflection stared back, hollow-eyed and tired. But it wasn't the only face I saw. In the corner of the restroom, just on the edge of the mirror's reflection, a woman was crouched low, her shoulders shaking as quiet sobs escaped her. She wore a tattered dress that hung loosely on her frame, and her hair obscured most of her face, except for the faint gleam of tears catching the dim light. Hey, I called, turning to face her fully. Are you okay? She didn't answer, just kept crying, the sound brittle and broken. I took a cautious step toward her. Ma'am, do you need help? Still nothing. My chest tightened, unease settling in. There was something wrong about her, something I couldn't put my finger on. Maybe it was the stillness of her frame, how only her shoulders moved, or the way her sobs sounded too deliberate, too rehearsed. I decided it wasn't my problem. I'll get someone to help you, I said, stepping back toward the door. Just hang tight. Her sobbing stopped. The sudden silence was deafening. My hand froze on the doorknob as a chill crept down my spine. Slowly I turned back to look at her. She was staring at me now. Her face, pale and streaked with tears, was tilted slightly to the side, her lips stretched into a smile that was too wide, too unnatural. Her eyes, those hollow, empty eyes, bored into me with an intensity that rooted me to the spot. I didn't wait for her to move. I bolted out of the restroom, my heart hammering against my ribs. The cool night air hit me like a slap, but I didn't stop. My boots pounded against the pavement as I made a beeline for my truck, parked under the faint glow of a flickering light. I glanced back once, just once, and saw her standing in the doorway of the restroom, her head still tilted, that eerie smile still plastered across her face. I scrambled into my cab, slamming the door shut and locking it with shaking hands. My breath came in ragged gasps as I fumbled with the keys, finally jamming them into the ignition. The engine roared to life, and I hit the gas, peeling out of the rest stop without a second thought. 
The road stretched out ahead of me, empty and dark. My heart was still racing, my hands gripping the wheel so tightly they ached. I told myself it was over, that I'd left her behind. But when I glanced into my side mirror, my blood ran cold. She was there, crouched on top of my trailer, her hands splayed against the metal, her head tilted just enough for me to see that smile. Her hair whipped wildly in the wind as she clung to the moving truck, completely unfazed by the speed or the distance I'd already traveled. No, I muttered, shaking my head. No, no, no. I pressed harder on the gas, the truck roaring as it hurtled down the empty highway. I kept glancing at the mirror, hoping she'd be gone, but she wasn't. She didn't move, didn't waver, just kept crouching there, staring at me through the reflection with that awful, unblinking grin. Panic clawed at my chest as I spotted the faint glow of a town ahead. I wasn't about to stop again, but I needed help. Someone else to see this, to confirm I wasn't losing my mind. I barreled into the town, pulling into the lot of a 24-hour diner that doubled as a truck stop. Jumping out of the cab, I waved frantically at the few people milling about. She's on my truck, I yelled, my voice cracking. Check the trailer, she's on it. Two men exchanged confused glances but followed me to the back of the rig. I grabbed the trailer doors, my hands trembling as I threw them open. The light from the diner spilled inside, illuminating the space. It was empty. No, I whispered, stepping inside. She was here. She was. My voice trailed off as my eyes caught the marks. Long, jagged scratches marred the inside walls of the trailer, as if something with claws had raked them from floor to ceiling. The men stared, their confusion giving way to unease. Look, one of them said, pointing. What the hell did that? I didn't have an answer. My knees felt weak as I stumbled out of the trailer, my mind racing. She couldn't have just disappeared. I saw her. She was on the trailer. The scratches were proof. The authorities were called, and a deputy showed up not long after. He examined the scratches, his face grim, but there wasn't much he could do. Could be vandals, he said, though his tone wasn't convincing. Probably kids messing around. I didn't argue. What could I say? That a ghost, or whatever she was, had stalked me from a rest stop and carved up my trailer like a wild animal? They'd think I was crazy. As the deputy drove away and the men wandered back to the diner, I sat in my cab, staring at the dashboard. My fuel gauge was lower than it should have been and my hands were still trembling. I decided to drive straight through to my destination, no more stops, no matter what. But as I turned the key in the ignition, I froze. The rearview mirror reflected the empty lot behind me. Empty, except for a shadowed figure standing just beyond the glow of the diner's lights. Her head was tilted to the side, her smile wide and unbroken. I didn't stop driving until the sun rose, and even now, every time I check my mirrors I half expect to see her there, crouched and smiling, waiting for me to notice her again.